Here we are, 138 pounds. We have from Boyertown, JT Cooley, a junior record 27-14, was eighth at King of the Mountains and sixth at Escape the Rock. Face off against Logan Pennypacker of Pottstown High School, a senior record 26-4, was third at Governor Mifflin, second at the New Oxford Tourney. These Chuck has the makings of a pretty good match. Both guys are, you know, like to open it up, especially Cooley. Cooley's one of my favorite kids to watch in District One, uh, just because he, he he's go for broke. Um, you know, at the same time, uh, you know, his, his one Achilles heel is his, his dad. Uh, and I'm just joking with John Cooley. You know, he always asks if he's gonna get a shout out on any of his broadcasts. So there, there's his uh, his shout out. John sitting in the corner for his son's match with uh, Boyertown. Boyertown's first state champ and legend Mike Spade. Yeah, this Pennypacker kid is under some people's radar. Very, very solid wrestler. Not really ranked in the top five. But this should be a really, really interesting match. Uh, Cooley comes in with a lifetime 66 and 31 record. He made regionals last year. He should be in the mix to go to states this year. He beat Stoney Bislin in the semifinal. And Logan Pack, Penny Packer, excuse me, from Pottstown, beat Kribel from Springford in the semifinal. That was an awesome semifinal match between those two. He was on the upper end. He won four to one against Matt Kribel. It was a very, very tight match until the end against Kribel. He was leading two to one in a scramble, got a takedown at the end, ended up winning four to one. Both of these kids should make waves at the regional level. Got about 40 seconds left here in the first period. Yeah, in our latest uh, District 1 rankings from PAWrestling.com, J2 Cooley comes in ranked third in the region. And Riley Palmer from Council Rock South and Connor Cron or I'm sorry, Colin Crone. And there's a shot attempt after throwing up the arms. And again, Cooley just goes at you and keeps coming at you. He's uh, very tenacious, very in-your-face type of wrestler. Kind of tries to smother you with his, uh, you know, his ties and his attacks. Colin Cronin from Upper Darby's second in the region. There's a stall, early stall on yeah. Pennypacker. Didn't expect to see that this early. Logan Pennypacker's been warm stalling with, you know, in the first period. There's a reshot attempt by Pennypacker. He's in deep. He's got Cooley in trouble. Cooley doing a good job of wrestling back into him. Ten to go. Short time here. Now he's got Cooley down the mat. He's going to lift up and drive across. And there, uh, not yet. Cooley's not out of it yet. Great job by Cooley keeping anything from happening. Paypacker not in the latest rankings, but has been in and out of them throughout the season. We head in the second period here. Cooley wins the toss and goes right down. Try to score those, as we always talk about, those ever important first points. Cooley to one foot, now up to two. He's working hands, and Penny Packer lets him go. Penny Packer, part of the big three. We'll see him in back to back to back matches here between Logan Penny Packer, Bryant Wise, and then Mason Penny Packer. You know, they've been wreaking a lot of havoc in the Pac 10 since their freshman year. They call them the big three for Pottstown. They, they win a lot of matches, and, you know, they're you know, uh, three great wrestlers and, and great kids overall. Yeah, Potsdam is a nice cool group of kids that are working hard. You know, it showed off earlier in the semifinal. Uh, he beat a returning uh, state qualifier. I'll be seeing the Penny Packer boys on the baseball field here in the spring. Both good baseball players as well. They're the core of their baseball team and program right now. Chuck, they're also pretty accomplished soccer players uh, to boot. There's a shot attempt by Penny Packer. Cooley's making them pay for it, getting him with the underhook. Now he's got him in the front head. Yeah, that's nice to see, too. You know, kids like that playing the three sports, you know, being active in all three, being leaders in all three, leaders in their community and in the classroom. Brian Wise also a pretty accomplished football player in his own right. Yes. So at least smaller school like that, they gotta share a lot of athletes with other sports. And we're gonna see another stall here on 
Got about 35 to go. On Penny Packer, if he keeps backing up like that. Line up for some good matches coming up here, Chuck, between this one and we have Reddington Wise next. We have Vogels and Mason Penny Packer. There's gonna be some uh, some good ones. Yeah, it's been an exciting night so far. Very competitive. The semifinal round was extremely competitive earlier today. Just good to see quality wrestlers coming through the Pac-10 right now. And when you come to this tournament, you see why Pac-10 is regarded as the best wrestling conference in in the Southeast region. They, you know, there's some of the toughest teams in the region reside here. We go into the third period here, one nothing lead for Cooley. Penny Packer chooses down. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that, and they say this, that, and the other about other conferences. But you know, the, a lot of times the proof's in the pudding, and they're just a lot, a lot of tough kids, a lot of tough teams to boot. Cooley having trouble getting down the mat. We we'll see if there's gonna be a stall here on him. He hasn't returned him to the mat, and he pulls him out of bounds. Gave him an awful lot, lot of time there to keep him on his feet. Cooley, instruction from his corner, puts him on their feet and ties the match. It's about one minute and 30 seconds to go. Shrug attempt by Cooley, reshot by Penny Packer. He's not too deep, and Cooley doing a good job of countering. Got the wizard going. And they go out of bounds. I mentioned earlier Cooley going getting sixth place to escape the rock. You know, he had an injury default out after he got slammed pretty hard, was taken to the hospital, taking actually down a stretcher when wrestling Riley Palmer for, for precautionary measures and yeah, everything turned out okay. He did miss a few matches as a result with a stiff neck. But uh, for a while there, a little, you know, was, uh, people were a little bit worried. with was pretty hard slam. So he may have, may have finished better than sixth at that point. He lost and it was in the seventh, the semifinal match. Still 1-1, we're yep. at about the 30-second mark. Cooley with a shot attempt, trying to clear hands there. Penny Packer able to escape. Looks... We've been in store here for an exciting 30 seconds. Shot attempt by Penny Packer. Short time left here. Cooley's handling him right now. He's trying to try and spin behind, trying to get on his horse and get behind, and he runs out of time. Oh We're going to sudden victory. Again, one minute will go on the clock. Penny Packer calling for injury time. Not sure if something happens. And here we go, overtime. Again, 1 1 score. First take that wins here in this one minute sudden victory. Hey, Packer's got a stalling warning, Chuck. He's got to watch it. He's in a lot of backing up there. Hate to see him or anyone lose on a, on a stall call unless it's blatantly obvious. 
I know the official doesn't want to make it that either, so not down there. I'm sure he's encouraging him to keep the action going. Cooley trying to spin behind, doesn't get it. Bad shot then by Penny Packer. As you know, a lot of times the refs will talk to him a little bit, say, hey, you got to move, I'm going to get you. And I'm sure the ref has said something to him, you better be putting on some offensive stuff here. He's got to go forward. He's got about 10 seconds to go. You know, Penny Packer's usually a guy who sets the pace and, and gets after it. And, and, you know, going back to what I said about Cooley, Cooley's a, a guy, his his style wears on you. And we talked, we talked about that earlier. Where you know they he just keeps coming, he keeps coming, he keeps coming. That's the end of our overtime period. We're gonna go ride out, tiebreaker ride out, not Four ultimate ten, tiebreaker. Payne Packer, I'm sorry, Cooley defers, and and going back to the saying, his style just of in your face just really really wears on you. And you see Penny Packer usually a kid that he's got a good gas tank. is kind of tired right now. Yeah. So this is two mandatory 30-second rideouts. Both wrestlers have a chance to choose as Penny Packer's gone down. He scores his cumulative. Even if he scores, it continues going. Like I said, it's not ultimate tiebreaker. Penny Packer trying for a switch as there are 14 seconds left in the overtime. How long is he going to let him sit there and not call for stalling? He's got to improve position. Can't say I agree with that, Chuck. I would have hit him with a stall probably about seven seconds to go, give him a chance for the restart. He has hung out there. Didn't try and prove position, didn't try and return to the mat. It's an unfortunate break. The Penny Packers has one. If Penny Packer gets in the same position, he gets hit, it's, it's the match. Yeah, you can see Penny Packer's a little frustrated there. He was thinking the same thing. And Cooley right to his feet. Penny Packer's have to go now. Again, Cooley can be a little bit more defensive here. Yep. Got about 18 seconds left. Again, like you said, Cooley being defensive. Shot attempt, he doesn't have to do anything. He can just kind of hang out. Five. Nice job by Cooley there to finish the match off. And there's your match. JT Cooley with the 2-1 overtime victory over Logan Pennypacker. Again, we're like we see, talked we're about. We're going to see good stuff from that Pennypacker kid here the next couple weeks. Yep. 